Welcome to this PalmSense video. I'm Lutz Stratmann and today I'm going to show you how to use the Palms, uh, Amstead Pico development board with the screen print electrode adapters that were delivered together in the Amstead Pico development kit with the board. We're going to um, use a screen print electrode by the, com uh, by the company Zimmer and Peacock for um, this demonstration. Okay, so if you want to connect the screen print electrode uh, adapter, you see that it has three pins on the back, which are connected to the screw terminals that are right next to the sensor cable socket. When you insert these pins, be careful, because the Amstead Pico has two different channels, uh, marked with zero and one. So connect the SPE adapter to the reference counter and working electrode of the same channel. So you just insert the pins into the right slots and then you screw them tight. And then you're ready to go to use uh, this adapter. This adapter has a distance between the three different contacts of 2.54 millimeter. That's a very common pitch for um, most uh, screen print electrode brands like Itelsense, BVT or um, Dropsense, for example. As I mentioned before, today we're going to use for this demonstration an electrode by ah, just using a different one, um, an electrode by Zimmer and Peacock. Uh, this is a glucose sensor, and because this sensor is modified with glucose oxidase, I don't want to leave any stains from my hands on it, so I'm wearing gloves to protect the to protect the electrode from me, not the other way around. Okay, so just take it out here. This electrode is printed on um, alumina ceramics. This means it's a bit thicker than the ones that are printed, for example, on plastic. So um, you have to uh, align the three silver contact pads with the contact pads in the adapter and just firmly push it in and then you are ready for a measurement almost. Okay, um, you have to connect your Amstead Pico development board via USB or Bluetooth if you're using battery power, for example, um, to your computing unit. We are using a laptop today and we already have installed Pierce Trace on this laptop, which I'm starting right now. And uh, we want to do uh, a chrono amperometry. And for this chrono amperometry, uh, we're going to measure glucose and uh, we're measuring glucose in Coke and we're using as a blank sample, as a background, Coke Zero. And then we're going to spike that later with original Coke, which has uh, 10.7 grams of sugar per 100 milliliters. Okay, so first we're going to make sure that um, the MZ Pico appears in the drop down menu for the connection, and then we press the connect button. Once uh, it's connected, we make sure we have chosen the right technique, which is chronoamperometry. As the name suggests, it means record current over time. And we're going to apply in that time a constant potential. We have chosen most of the available current ranges. And for the outer ranging of the MZ Pico to take place, we should give him some time uh, in advance on the measurement. So we put as an equilibration time five seconds. That means the measurement is running for five seconds without us recording. Then the suggested potential 
by uh, Zimmer and Peacock to use these electrodes for a measurement is uh, 0.65 volts or 650 millivolts. We're going to record a value every half second and we're going to let this measurement run for 600 seconds. Then we are going to apply 100 microliter of the Coke Zero, of the sugar-free Coke. And when you do that, you should take care that uh, all three electrodes are covered with the Coke. So the silver ones and the carbon one. And so now we have covered the electrodes. We have set all our parameters. Then we can start our measurement. So um, in the beginning of the measurement, there's usually some capacitive current that still has to decay. And we had a dry electrode and we put a liquid on it. So also we have some swelling. So they are, and we have kind of impurities that are still electrochemically active. So um, usually at the beginning of such a measurement, you see a current that is changing um, over time. Okay, and um, um, yeah, so we're just going to wait till we have a stable current so that everything is in equilibrium. And that we can see changes that are due to the glucose and not due to other effects. Okay, now our base current should be stable enough that we should see a clear change when we're adding some glucose in form of uh, the, well, original taste coke. Oh, um, by the way, I just took some sample volumes and I have shaken these to remove the um, carbonic acid to make sure that there's like no bubbles that are forming on the electrodes which would disturb our signal. Okay, and now I'm adding just 10 microliters of the regular coke and I'm pumping these a bit into the droplet and we should see immediately a change in the signal so you see how the sensor is responding to glucose. Um, by the way, glucose detection is still very interesting um, for electrochemists. It's also very interesting for research because it's the most successful commercial application of electrochemistry. Um, the test of uh, sugar in blood that is used by diabetes patients multiple times a day is, uh, well, it's an electrochemical measurement. These test stripes work exactly as this electrode and the readers you have are basically very simple potentiostats. Okay, well, so with this, our uh, little demonstration and this video uh, concludes. And uh, yeah, feel free to look at our other videos. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any new ones, subscribe to our channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.